Oh, hey guys. Just out here taking a look at my screwdriver antenna on my truck, HF Mobile. It's crazy fun. If you haven't tried it, you may want to do that. But it is springtime. And you know what that means? It's antenna season. So we encourage you to get out, do some maintenance on your wire antennas or your towers, and maybe experiment with some new stuff. Well, before it gets real hot down here in the sunny south, we actually had snow this morning. Hard to believe. It's uh, somewhere in the 50s right now. This morning it was 35. But real nice. This is about what spring should be. So I'm out here taking a look. And this past weekend, a few days ago, Mark Tarpley, N4UFP, and I got together and we started talking about the ZS6 BKW antenna. It's a multi band wire antenna, multi bands, no match box. And if you got a tuner, internal tuner in your radio, it can handle the rest of the bands, no problem. So if you're going to have one antenna, we pretty much recommend that. You can say goodbye to that G5RV. And it's a great field day antenna. We're going to talk about it. We're going to build one. We're going to test it out. So why don't you join us for that? Take a look. Hi, I'm Mark, N4UFP, and I'm here today to talk to you about the construction and installation of the ZS6 BKW multi-band doublet antenna. I'm sure somebody is going to ask right now, what the heck is a ZS6 BKW antenna? You're in luck, I know the answer. It's a very simple antenna, a wire antenna 93 feet in length approximately, 93 to 94 feet, fed in the center through a piece of 450 ohm ladder line about 39 feet 3 inches long. From that point to the transceiver, 50 ohm coax the rest of the way. And what's nice about this antenna, it has low SWR on 40, 20, 17, 12, and at least the upper half of 10 meters. And it's easily matched on the lower half of 10 meters, 15 meters, 30 meters, and even 60 meters. And sometimes, depending on the installation, you may find that you have a region of low SWR on the bottom of the 80 meter band. Now, you might say, well, wait a second, I already have a G5RV. Well, if you do, you should probably take it down. G5RV was designed originally by an Englishman, Lou Varney, G5RV, to be a three half wavelength center fed antenna on 20 meters. The pattern was such that it reached all the points in the British Empire that G5RV wanted to reach. He never contemplated that it would be a multi band antenna. That was American marketing genius at work. Because it is not a multi band antenna. No, absolutely not. And anybody who's bought one knows you're going to need some sort of matching device on almost every band you want to work with. With this antenna, you know you have five bands where you can go and transmit without having to worry about matching, and matching on the other bands is not really a problem. All right, so that's the introduction. In a minute, we'll look at the pieces and how we construct it. And as I said, this is about the simplest multi-band antenna you can build. We're going to wind up with two pieces of wire, each one under 47 feet long, and a piece of ladder line about 39 feet 3 inches, and that's it. And another great thing, it's shorter than the G5 RV. Yes. One of the unintended good consequences of making the switch is that this antenna requires a little bit less room. Each side of the antenna is somewhere around 46 feet 8.5 to 46 feet 9 inches long. That will bring the whole antenna in at under 94 feet, somewhere between 93 and 94 feet. It can be made with everyday materials. The antenna itself is made from number 14 insulated stranded wire. You can get this at any big box DIY retailer. The ladder line is available from any number of sources on the internet and pretty much at every ham fest, not terribly expensive. So be sure to visit your local favorite uh, ham radio supplier for that. All right, well now we've talked a little bit about the antenna, what it is, now we need to go make one. So let's go.
Okay, now let's talk a little bit about some of the details of the assembly. Here's the feed point. You can see that we've run each of the radiating wires through the hole in the center insulator and then made a, a simple knot with it. That provides some strain relief. We've connected it to the ladder line through this brass number 1024 bolt. We've done the same thing on the other side. And then to provide some strain relief for the ladder line, we've got a little bit of rope here going around the center insulator. And that's it. That's all there is to the center connection. Now, you're probably wondering why I used brass hardware. Well, the answer is A, I had it, and B, even when it corrodes, A, it's still conductive, and B, the copper oxides formed don't cause the nut to seize. You can still get it apart. Certainly you could use stainless, that would be fine. The one challenge with stainless, if you tighten it too much, is the nut can gall, and then it's very difficult to come apart. That generally does not happen with brass. I'd stay away from plain steel nuts and bolts because they will rust and you will have a mess on your hands. All right, so that's the, the feed point. Now let's look at the other end of the matching section. We are now 39 feet 3 inches away from the feed point. We have another center insulator here. This is a very convenient thing to use to keep these two conductors from touching. And we, we assembled it very simply again, brass number 1024 hardware. We've got ring connectors soldered to the ladder line, and then ring connectors connected to the coax. And we simply make the connection, make sure we tighten everything well. Now, you'll notice this piece of rope right here. The purpose of that is to provide a strain relief and to support this choke ballon. It's about four inches in diameter and has half a dozen turns of the feed line, which in this case is our G8X. We use that to make sure that we don't have any unwanted currents flowing on the outside of the coax braid. The antenna might very well work without it, but I've found that it always works with it. So it's something worth doing, and if you can't duplicate this exactly, do the best you can. Something is always better than nothing. All right, now we have the antenna, antenna assembled and we're ready to put it up in the air.
Let's fire this bad boy up. Okay, so here we go. What banner are we gonna start? Delta with? Charlie. Well, right now, we're on 40 meters, and a minute ago, to test the antenna, we made a contact in the WPX contest. No problem, 5-9 report from uh, WX3B. I'm not exactly sure where he is. That's not part of the exchange, but we'll look it up in a minute but he's uh, S9 plus, so we know the antenna's working. Let's move tell, up. Tell the ladies and gentlemen how much power we were running. Oh, uh, about uh, two and a half, three watts. Not a whole lot of power, uh, particularly given the fact that we're not running a, a mode that's really designed to work with low power like FT8 or even CW. We're just running plain old sideband. And we're in the middle of a big contest weekend where there's gonna be pileups. Yes, we're, we're not the only person who was trying to call WX3B. What was interesting, when we called him, somebody else was stronger, and he called them first. But when he called them, he said, N4, stand by. So even though we weren't the strongest signal, he was still able to copy us. Let's try a different band. Let's move up. We'll go down to 20. November 4, Uniform, Foxtrot Papa. Uh, November 3. November 3. November 4, Uniform, Foxtrot Papa. November 4, Uniform, Foxtrot Papa, 59061. QSL, 59002. Good luck. 0002. Roger, Roger. 0002. Roger, Roger. So it works. So there you go. Five watts, we're in the contest. Two contacts. Two contacts. CQ Worldwide, WPX. So there we go. We made it here. We did. It took a little bit of time. But we made one. In fact, we, we've made two. We made one on 20 meters. Yeah, we, 40 meters. We did, we did a little test before we decided to record just to make sure. We didn't want to look like total idiots. Just partial numbers. But, so, we've done good. We've taken an antenna that we built this afternoon mm -hmm. out of stuff we, most hams that have been a ham for a while will have. So if you don't have it, maybe ask a club member or a friend of yours that's in the hobby that might have something. And I would bet they'd be willing to loan it to you, give it to you, and come help you out. And you'll have a good time doing something in the hobby, building an antenna that you're going to use. It's going to work great. But so we built this, strung it up, tested it, made a few cues with your Yezu FT817. And how much power were we running? I'm going to guess about 3 watts. And that's why we struggled a bit on 20 meters, because it's a contest this weekend. And there are folks who have more power and antennas with more gain than we do. Nevertheless, we, we did make a couple of contacts. And I can't stress enough that this is an antenna that, in a sense, got made out of everyday things. We used about 94 feet of number 14 stranded THHN wire. That is available at any home improvement store in the known universe. And it's not expensive. Not at all a 500 foot roll which is a whole lot more than you'll need probably set you back about 40 bucks which is 
Just think how many antennas you can make. You can make five antennas right. out of that mm -hmm. for 40 bucks. So if you and your buddies want to get together and build one, yes, it's a good way. The insulators, if, if you noticed, we did not use end insulators. Instead, we folded the wire and tied a sheet bend with the rope. And for those of you that aren't familiar with knots, you might want to Google sheet bend. It's a very simple knot that has incredible holding power. And if you've tied it properly, I don't care how hard you pull on that antenna and that rope, it ain't coming apart. We've decided to stop using end insulators, especially when you're stringing up in trees, because if you've ever gotten one hung or tried to pull it through limbs, a lot of times it's just not going to go. Yes, and we weren't planning on running a lot of power. We didn't expect to have extremely high voltages at the end. The other thing to consider, we were using Dacron rope. It is hydrophobic. It doesn't absorb water. It acts like a pretty good end insulator all by itself. In any case, the purists would probably say we should have done something different. But one of the things we wanted to do was make this a simple antenna that anybody could build without having to order a lot of stuff online. So we've talked about the wire. And of course, ultimately, the antenna is fed with coax, and all hams have 50 ohm coax somewhere. And there's one more piece, and that's the matching section made out of ladder line. Standard ladder line with a velocity factor of 90%. That's a piece that's 39 feet, 3 inches long. So really, you have to go find 40 feet of ladder line. Probably that would cost you, I don't know, $12, $15, $16, uh, plus shipping from any of the vendors that you might find on the Internet. You can certainly find it at any ham fest at a very reasonable price. That's something that in principle you could make yourself, but you probably wouldn't want to. That that truly would take all the fun out of this. Yeah, that, that's real time consuming and it's not fun. Well, it's not all. fun at all. So that's the one thing you're going to have to buy. That's the one store-bought piece. The rest you can do yourself. Even the And that's the only piece that you're probably not going to be able to go to your local home improvement store to get. Certainly... PVC pipe can be used for end insulators if you want them, you really feel you have to have them. Uh, the center insulator and spacer that we showed, we used some antenna insulators, but you could have used PVC pipe there as well. So this is a simple antenna to build, and the performance is good, and I'll be honest with you, the performance is generally going to be better than that commercially made G5RV that you might be thinking about buying. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, certainly the most important one is that the G5RV does not offer a good match on any amateur band. And if you know anything about coax, when you have a high SWR, losses in coax increase. When you're using coax as a feed line, you really want to keep the SWR under 3. And how do you do that? You use an antenna like the ZS6BKW. So it's simple to build offers good performance and it's not so large that you can't put it up in the typical suburban lot. Really has a lot going for it and I'm not sure why it isn't better known but we're hoping that if we do this video more people will know about it. And I can I can attest to the performance. I actually got my DXCC, the mix and my sideband DXCC on that antenna. 100 watts will do you just fine. You can work the world with it. And really you know, if you're needing, thinking you need a whole bunch of towers like you've probably seen behind us earlier in the video, you can do it with this one antenna. We'll give you most all the HF bands, with the exception of a few, but that's, we will address that at a later date. Well, what you have really is an antenna without any matching that will provide good performance on 40, 20, 17, 12, and more than half of 10 meters. So there's five bands. It is easily matched. With no matchbox. No matchbox. With a matchbox, you can match it on 80, 60, 30, and 15. So there you go. That's the entire HF allocation for American amateurs. That's it. So one antenna will do it all. It will not work particularly well on 160. But that could be the subject. There, there, may be, there may be something in the works. That may be a future video. I have used it, interestingly enough, on six meters. And Brad has said it, and I'll, I'll say it again. You're only going to put up one wire antenna to work HF. This is the one you want to put up. You can have some fun building it after you put it up. It's a good performer. 
and if you ever have to make any repairs, all the parts are e easily available. What's not to like? And you mentioned field day. If you're going out by yourself and there are just a couple of guys, if you're just going to have one station and you're only going to need one antenna, this is an excellent choice for that event. And you might want to consider that. Uh, even if you're doing a, uh, a bigger thing, you could build multiples of them. Like I said, you know, if you're going to out and go buy 500 feet of wire, well, you can build five of them, depending on how much how much room you got. But it, it would be a real good field day antenna. Or if you're just going camping in the woods for the weekend, you and your buddies. Lots of opportunities and ways to, to use it. This antenna is actually one example of a whole family of antennas that use a very simple series matching section to have a resonance, low SWR, in more than one band. This one is pretty handy because it covers five bands. In the future we may look at one that I've constructed that covers four bands and it's four bands that this one doesn't really cover. It's And that may be a video in the future. But, and if you want to hear any more about what we've talked about, leave us a comment below and we'll see about maybe doing that, uh, a video on that, or at least get a little more in depth in some point and somehow um, on that particular subject. Yes, if there's more you'd like to know, just uh, ask a question, you know, drop a comment and we'll be happy to answer it. If there's a particular antenna that you might like us to wire antenna that you might like us to build in the future. What the heck? We're, we're crazy. We'll try anything once, so suggest it. A little it. bit crazy. Um, a little bit crazy. In a good way. Sure. In the best possible way. Oh, yeah. What is us? Yeah, well, there you go. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And if you really, really like us, and you want to do us a favor, hit the little bell icon down there at the bottom. You'll be notified anytime we upload new videos and content to our YouTube channel. Be sure to check us out, ARRLSC.org, ARRSC on Twitter and Facebook. And you can find us, those are probably the best way to find us. And don't forget to keep a lookout for our section reports coming out every month. And I think we have another one coming up real soon. In a matter of days. A matter of days, so stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see some good stuff in the comments section. We'll see ya. 73. You're a